you ever wondered why the sea rises and falls every day? For mariners, understanding this natural movement isn't just a matter of curiosity, it's essential for safety, timing, and precision. In this video, we'll break down the key concepts and terms behind this phenomenon, helping you understand why they play such a critical role in navigation and coastal operations. Before we delve into the following terms, let us first explore what tides are, what causes them, how they work, and why they behave differently in different parts of the world. Tide is the periodic rise and fall of sea level caused primarily by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun on the earth. The moon has a greater effect than the sun because it is much closer to earth. Let's say this is the Earth, and this is the Moon. The Moon exerts a gravitational pull that causes the ocean to bulge outward in the direction of the Moon, and also on the opposite side. However, the bulge on the opposite side is usually slightly smaller in extent. This bulging of the ocean causes a rise in sea level, known as high water. The larger bulge, which is closer in line with the moon, is often referred to as high high water, while the smaller bulge on the opposite side is known as low high water. Meanwhile, the areas of the Earth where the ocean is pulled away, in the direction perpendicular to the moon, will experience low water. As the Earth rotates, different locations pass through areas of high and low sea level, experiencing the periodic rise and fall of the water, a phenomenon known as tide. The height of tide is measured from the chart datum, which is usually the lowest astronomical tide. Lowest astronomical tide is the lowest sea level that can be expected to occur under average meteorological conditions. It is determined by analyzing the predicted tidal level over a period of 18.6 years. However, LAT is not the extreme lowest sea level that can ever occur. In rare cases, unusual meteorological conditions, such as strong offshore winds and changes in atmospheric pressure, can cause the sea level to drop below LAT. This phenomenon is known as a negative surge. Now, chart datum is the reference water level from which the following are measured. The depths or charted depths that are shown on nautical charts, the height of tide that can be found on the tidal tables, the drying heights of features that are exposed at low tide. So, the chart datum serves as the reference plane for measuring charted depth, height of tide, and drying height. Chart datum is typically based on a specific phase of the tide. The most commonly used chart datums include the lowest astronomical tide and the mean lower low water. As discussed earlier, the lowest astronomical tide is based on the lowest predicted tide under normal astronomical conditions over an 18.6 year cycle. This reference plane is set as low as reasonably possible, providing a more conservative baseline. Many national charting agencies, including the United Kingdom Hydrographic Office and the Australian Hydrographic Service, use lowest astronomical tide as the basis for their chart datums. In contrast, the mean lower low water is the average of the lower of the two daily low tides over a 19-year period. Since it is an average rather than an extreme, mean lower low water is generally higher than the extreme low point that the lowest astronomical tide represents. Mean lower low water is commonly used by the United States' National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Nautical charts that use a chart datum based on the lowest astronomical tide will show shallower charted depths compared to charts based on the mean lower low water which display slightly greater depths. This is why using lowest astronomical tide as the chart datum 
provides a more conservative safety margin for navigation, it represents a worst-case scenario, helping mariners avoid running aground when tides are at their lowest. Now, while the moon's gravitational pull is the primary force behind tides, the sun also plays a significant role. The height of the tide depends on the combined gravitational effects of both the moon and the sun on the Earth. As their relative positions change during the lunar cycle, the tidal range varies. This variation gives rise to what we call spring tides and neap tides. Spring tides occur when the gravitational forces of the sun and moon align, during a new moon when they are in conjunction, and during a full moon when they are in opposition. This alignment produces higher high tides and lower low tides, creating the greatest tidal range. The mean high water spring is the average height of two successive high waters during these periods of greatest tidal range calculated over a long-term period, typically one year. And the mean low water spring is the average height of two successive low waters during the same spring tide periods, measured over the same time frame. The difference in height between mean high water spring and mean low water spring is called the spring tide range. In contrast, Neap tides occur when the gravitational forces of the sun and moon act at right angles to each other during the quarter moon of the lunar cycle. This misalignment reduces the overall gravitational pull on Earth's oceans, producing lower high tides and higher low tides, and resulting in the smallest tidal range. Now, the mean high water neap is the average height of two successive high waters during periods of least tidal range, calculated over a long-term period, typically one year. Similarly, the mean low water neap is the average height of two successive low waters during those same neap tide periods, calculated over the same time frame. The difference in height between mean high water neap and mean low water neap is called the neap tide range. Mean high water springs is commonly used as a reference plane to measure features such as the height of a lighthouse, the elevation of a cliff, or a pier's height above the water. Earlier we learned that the lowest astronomical tide is often used as the chart datum for depths, giving us a consistent baseline for sounding measurements. But tides don't just affect what's below the waterline, they also influence how we measure heights above it. When it comes to the charted vertical clearance of bridges, overhead power cables, and other overhead obstructions, we use another vertical datum known as highest astronomical tide. This is the highest water level that can be expected under average meteorological conditions and under any combination of astronomical influences. However, HAT is not the absolute highest possible level. Exceptional weather events, such as storm surges, can cause water levels to rise even higher. HAT values are determined by examining predicted sea levels over an 18.6 year tidal cycle, ensuring that mariners have the most reliable and conservative clearance information possible and it can be obtained from tide tables or from the table of levels on the chart. Now that we've covered both the lowest astronomical tide for depths and the highest astronomical tide for overhead clearances, we can place these tidal datums into a bigger vertical framework. Somewhere between these extremes lies a more familiar reference, mean sea level. Unlike LAT and HAT, which represent tidal extremes, Mean sea level is the long-term average height of the sea's surface, measured over many years and used as a datum. This measurement is often taken over a full 19-year metonic lunar cycle to account for long-term tidal variations. Mean sea level serves as a neutral reference point for mapping, engineering, and land surveys. In non-tidal areas, such as the Baltic Sea, mean sea level is even used as the chart datum. That's all for now. I hope you found the video helpful. See you next time, and thank you for watching. Bye.